Well, last post I said something wild was bound to happen sooner or later. I wasn't disappointed. Mark had been living out here for about a week now, and he finally got what he was looking for. Action! It just wasn't really in his favor, though. I mentioned the patrols he keeps taking me on in the last post, but I didn't really go into detail. He calls them patrols, but it's honestly more of a scavenger hunt. He even gave me a damn list! Like a little kid or something. On the list were specific signs and objects that were indicated of tangible activity. Tangible's fancy talk for monsters. I asked him what intangible was as a joke, and he nonchalantly said, ghosts and other shit that you can't touch. After I realized he was serious, I popped the question. Why not just say monsters and ghosts and shit? And he thought for a moment. Because the people who name this stuff are nerds. Fair enough, I guess. I'm off on the tangent again. Back to the scavenger hunt. The list he gave me had a lot of stuff on it. As I was walking through the woods for the second time that day, one of the things on the list kept catching my eye. Stairs. Why the fuck would stairs even be on the list? That's not paranormal at all. Also, if there had been stairs in these woods, I would have fucking found them already. That's not something you miss. I mean, the thought of this whole search around for stuff idea was stupid from the beginning anyway. I never searched for Hellspawn on this property. It always just found me all by itself. The only reason I even participated in Mark's patrols were to humor him so he wouldn't be as crabby. And because I like to get outside anyways. Even so, stairs? I was looking at the list, eyeing down the word stairs for the four millionth time when it suddenly got dark. Confused, I look up to see that it hasn't actually gotten dark. I was just in a shadow. A shadow that was being cast by a tall, skinny wooden wall. I had been to this exact spot a few days earlier, and there had been no such object. The wall was about 5 feet wide and 10 feet tall, and somehow I almost walked directly into it without realizing. I began to walk around it quickly and realized it wasn't a wall. Yep, you probably already guessed it. It was the back of a fucking flight of stairs. I was honestly fucking shook. It was like I had summoned them after thinking about them too much. I immediately called Mark on the radio he had given me for situations like this and yell, Dude! I actually found a flight of stairs! Like, real friggin' stairs out here! I hadn't been this excited about something in a long time, and I had no idea why I was excited. I think it had something to do with me thinking the stairs were such a stupid thing to look for, and then finding someone I never expected to. Either way, I barely heard Mark respond with, Okay, just stay put for a minute. I'll be there soon. And please stop screaming. You're scaring away all the... things out here. He said something else, but I wasn't listening. I was far too engrossed with the stairs. I had to go up them. It wasn't like they were calling me or anything. It was more of the fact that I'm pretty sure I would be able to see my house from the top. So, with Mark still saying unintelligible commands on the radio... I began to ascend. As I walked up the stairs, the woods around me started to quiet down, which is weird in retrospect, but I didn't really pay any attention to that. Another thing I noticed is that there weren't any leaves or dirt or anything on the steps. Anyone who has experience in the woods knows it only takes a few hours for Mother Nature to spread her shit all over any given object left in her care. The real anomaly happened when I hit the top step, though. The second my heel hit the top step, I heard Mark let out a, WHAT IN THE SON OF A BITCH! I froze and started weighing my options. If I let whatever was out there kill Mark, I wouldn't have to deal with him anymore. I also told myself I wasn't gonna kill people anymore. Does it really count as killing him if I just let him die? They'd probably just replace him anyway. I guess I'll go help. And with that thought, I went to go help him. I honestly expected a pail to be clamped onto his foot or for him to have fallen into one of Camo's traps. But, alas, all I found was Mark, without his shoes on, just his socks, clenching the toes of each one of his feet in his hands. Before I could even ask him what was going on, he stuttered, You, you went up those damn stairs, didn't you? Yes, and why does that matter? I'm telling you. If looks could castrate. 
bad shit happens when you go up the stairs, you dick. I told you over the radio not to go up them. Ah, I must have missed that part. Uh, what happened to you anyway? Now, this part is kind of nasty. Mark let go of the end of one of his socks to reveal that the toe area was covered in blood. Then, he removed his sock, and I shit you not, all of his toenails were gone. Damn, how'd you manage that? Are you daft, Cole? You did this when you went up those stairs. Yeah, sounds a bit stupid, I know, but I kind of believe him. Because I know for a fact those stairs were not normal. I'm certain of this because when I went back to show Mark where they were, who was limping something awful, they just weren't there anymore. Just disappeared. Mark wasn't surprised by this either. And in any case, if you were wondering, I could not see my house from the top. Which was a bummer. That's about it for the stairs, but something else did happen yesterday. The day after the stair incident, I actually met a brand new monster. At least, new to me anyway. I think Mark knew what it was, but he won't tell me. It gave me the spooks though, that's for sure. Anyway, we were walking through an area of the woods that stays somewhat dark during the day due to the dense trees covering and blocking out most of the sun. Other than the lack of light, everything seems pretty docile. That was until Mark started complaining about hearing a noise. Cole, do you hear that? Uh, I think it's static or something. What? No, I don't hear that. Mark put a hand on my chest, stopping me mid-sentence. I look over at him to see what's up, and he is staring at me with extremely wide eyes. We need to go to the house. Now. I had never seen him get this frustrated, so I knew things were serious. I nodded and we both turned to run to the house, but the tall man was already blocking the way. Now, when I say the tall man, I mean really, really tall man. I'm also fairly certain that he wasn't a man. The tall man just makes a good name. He was between 10 and 12 feet tall and was wearing rags made out of what looked like dirty brown and tan rags stitched together. These rags covered his whole body, including his hands, feet, and face. He was also thin, but, but something deep in my gut told me he had some kind of unnatural strength. As his image sank into my brain, I heard Mark whisper, Holy shit, it's really one of them. Somewhere off to my left. But there was a complete silence for a while, not actually sure how long. The only thing I could hear was a slight static and buzzing noise. Nobody moved in the silence. Not Mark, not me, not the pail that was about to bite into Mark's legs while he was distracted. Wait, holy shit, Mark, look out, pail on your right. With surprising speed, Mark pulled out his Glock and put two shots into the pail's head. It didn't move after that, but the tall man did. The sudden scuffle seemed to set the tall bastard off into a rage, and the one subtle static sound grew into a roar. It was like no sound I had ever heard before. Maybe something like metal grinding up other metal? However, the sound was the least of our worries. It started sprinting at us. It was originally about 30 yards away, but seemed to cover the distance in the blink of an eye. He was on us before we could even react. He went for Mark first, reaching out for him with those long, skinny arms. His fingers seemed to stretch so that they could reach all the way around Mark's torso. As Mark was lifted off the ground, kicking and yelling, he emptied the entire rest of his clip into the tall man's head. It did nothing. That's about the time when the big black tentacles ruptured out from the creature's back. Six new weapons now ripping holes in the rags. This thing must have been terrible at making its own clothes. Like, how hard would it be to just make tentacle holes so you don't end up ripping your own shirts? Anyway, I really didn't want this big fella ripping Mark apart, so I had to figure something out. Before it managed to obliterate old Marky, I drew my gun and emptied my own clip into various parts of the monster in an effort to find a weak spot. No luck. In fact, one of the bullets bounced off of him. One of them whizzed right past my ear. It was like, under those rags he was made of steel. But I'm no quitter. I now had his attention, and I'm pretty sure Mark was unconscious at this point because he couldn't breathe due to the thing's death grip. I drew my brand new Bear Grylls survival knife and lunged at the thing with all my strength at its leg, but I didn't stab it. If bullets couldn't cut through this thing's skin, my knife didn't have a chance, but I had a plan. I got behind it, 
only to get snatched up in the air by one of its tentacle things. I was immediately faced to, uh, rags? With the thing? Its tentacle was wrapped tightly around my stomach. It now had Mark and I exactly where I wanted. I swear, I could hear a deep demonic laughter within the still roaring static that filled my brain. But it stopped laughing when I started. I began scream laughing, not really sure why. Sometimes I think I might actually be insane. The tall man cocked his head to the side as if saying, You do know you lost, right? The only thing I was able to say before the last of my air was squeezed out of me was, I really hope this fucking works. And with that, I took the knife that was still in my hand and sliced at the tentacle as hard as I could. My hope was that since the tentacle could move fluidly, the skin would have been softer and weaker. Otherwise, it would be stiff and not flexible. Oh, how right that theory was. I was met with a spray of hot black liquid as the static sound morphed into the sounds of nails on a chalkboard. I fell seven or eight feet and landed flat on my back. That shit hurt. But adrenaline is a hell of a chemical, so I was back on my feet almost immediately. Two things I noticed off the bat. It was still holding a now unconscious mark, and my attack hadn't quite managed to slice through the entire tentacle. But I was close. The thing seemed to be deciding on whether to retreat or try to kill me again. I took advantage of this slight hesitation and leapt on the now limp tentacle. I grabbed it and yanked with all the force I can muster. Now, it completely severed itself from the beast. Suddenly, all the sounds in my head stopped, and I heard Mark hit the ground off to my right. I look up, only to see the tall man's covered head aimed at its now disconnected appendage. Then at me. Then at the woods behind him. Then at me. Then at his tentacle. Something tells me he's never been injured before. After he finished looking at the stuff, he bolted backwards just as fast as he approached us before. Yes, he sprinted off backwards. What is it with monsters and running backwards? Seems silly to me, and dangerous. Anyway, I ended up having to carry old Mark over my shoulder back to the house, and he could stand to lose a few pounds. He woke up a few hours later and interrogated me on how I managed to scare the thing off after he passed out. I told him I just ripped off my clothes and started running at the thing until it ran off. Mark said he won't let me see the thing's file until I tell him what really happened. But, I really want to sell the naked story. Maybe I'll tell them what really happened and let y'all know the real name of the creature. Or maybe, I'll keep trying to convince Mark that while he's a monster hunter, I'm a monster predator. That's it for now though, guys. I'll post again soon. I haven't seen Skinny in a few days and I still haven't heard from the lady in the trees in a while. But, life goes on, right? Be sure to check out the other parts of the series. I'll have the links all below. Until next time, Cole, signing off.